As a kid, Linda Girls moved a lot because of her father's occupation. For a while, her dad was a miner in Pengilly, and then in, when she was in sixth grade, they moved to Grand Rapids when her dad got a job at Blinded Paper Company. Linda was born in Hibbing, Minnesota in 1948. She also lived in Bemidji and a small town called Clearwater. She had three brothers and one sister. Linda attended four different elementary schools, including Nashwalk, Pengilly, and Grand Rapids. Linda and her siblings each got an allowance. Her older brother always asked for her allowance to go on a date with his girlfriend or to hang out with his friends. Usually she gave her brother her allowance when his friends came over because she said she always liked one of them. She said her youngest brother was always annoying. He got away with everything and anything he wanted, he got, like most of the youngest siblings do. That irritated her, but there was not much she could do about it. Once her sister had just gotten a white blouse, Linda liked the blouse, so one day she wore it to school. During art class, she was painting and she got paint on it. She tried to wash it off, but couldn't. Her sister was very mad. At this time, she lived in Grand Rapids. In September of 1963, 15-year-old Linda Gross skipped through the doors of Grand Rapids High School wearing a wide smile, overjoyed for her first day of high school. Linda was a quiet and shy teenager, unlike her other siblings. She had three rambunctious brothers and a sister who she had become very close to. Her younger brother was constantly pestering her, wanting to play games, while her older brother would steal money from her so he could go out with his girlfriend. Her sister, on the other hand, had much more in common. Her stomach filled with butterflies as she traversed the commons area towards the office doors. Compared to previous schools she had gone to, Grand Rapids was by far the largest of them all. Excuse me, but can I get my schedule? Linda managed to squeak to the receptionist. She couldn't wait to meet her new classmates and teachers. Sure thing, sweetheart! The lady answered, smacking her gum and handing her the papers. Linda, thanking her, left the office and meandered the hallways to her first class. Linda was the type of student you would want your child to be. She got good grades, mostly A's and B's, with an occasional C, and it wasn't often that Linda would get in trouble. Unlike most kids her age, she was never the rebellious type. She was relatively quiet in class, kept to herself, and always got her work done. Although Linda was shy, it didn't take long for her to make friends. After school, they would all rush over to one of their houses and play games like Capture the Flag, Kick the Can, and Marco Polo. If they ran out of games to play, they would make up new ones. They would play outside for hours on end until their parents yelled at them to come inside, which was always after sunset. They would also have sleepovers and do things like listen to records, gossip about people like John F. Kennedy, the Beatles and cute boys, play Monopoly, or if they were lucky enough and had saved a few nickels, they could go down to the store and buy candy. Linda Gross is now 67 years old, has four kids, and lives in Big Fork, Minnesota. She can't believe how much the times have changed since she was a kid. Linda says that when she was young, she didn't have cell phones, calculators, iPads, computers, and things like that. They didn't need electronics to entertain them. They entertained themselves. She remembers when you could go down to the store and get a bottle of pop for 15 cents, and when you didn't talk to your friends from behind a screen. Now, you're lucky to get a phone call or even a letter from a friend. Seeing her grandchildren and how advanced their generation is today reminds her of how different it is from the 60s. Although Linda appreciates the conveniency of technology today, the simpler times will always bring back good memories and a smile to her face.